Glory to God. Father, as we go into your word this morning, we receive light, we receive revelation, we receive insight, we receive comprehension of your perfect will. In the name of Jesus, thank you for visiting us. Thank you for touching us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Today we start our study and I'm excited to share with you. We start our study on prosperity, the power of prosperity. God wants us to prosper. Yeah. That is our desire and that is will. But we need to understand how that happens. How God makes that to be in our lives. So we can yield to him and line up with what he has for us. So throughout this week, we're going to be looking at the powers of purpose. I mean, the powers of prosperity. You know, we're going to be looking at the things that pull wealth. <laughs> there are things that pull wealth. Wealth, money. And that's why the Bible talks about mammon. In fact, Jesus said that the contention is not actually between Satan and God. The contention is between Satan and mammon. Because people like money and, you know, if, if people are following Satan, Satan should not deceive himself. They're not following because they like him. <laughs> they are following him because of the money. It is the money. Many people are also following God because of the money. So God, God himself knows, you know, that this one, this is one that they said they are my children. It's the money that they are looking for, the money. If I don't give them money now, you will see them again, you know. So God knows. Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean that uh, we should not want money? No, we should want money, but money should not be the reason why we're following God. We follow God because he's God. We follow God because he's good. We follow God because he's sweet. If I tell you now that we have had 1,000 testimonies of people who started colonial time, and within six months they became millionaires, I'm telling you, <laughs> our platform will be crashing. <laughs> By the amount of people that will be coming in to come and hear me preach about Cornelia because they become millionaires, you know. All right, let's look into the scripture. Second Corinthians in chapter 8, verse 9. Second Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. All right. He became poor so that you can be rich. All right. Isaiah 53, verse 12. All right, I think I should read verse 11 to make it more, um, to drive the message back home properly. He shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. That's Jesus Christ, the prophecy about Jesus. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide his poor with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with transgressions transgressors and he bear the sins of many uh, and made intercession for the transgressors all right that's jesus jesus got those things for us and then in first kings in chapter 5 verse 5 we see god you know and solomon you know and solomon oh, so well chapter 3 really from verse 5 to 15 is there you can write it down because i won't be able to read that that's a long read but i'll tell you what is there you know, but Solomon said something about his purpose in chapter 5, verse 5, 1 Kings 5, 5. And behold, I propose to build an house unto the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord spake unto David my servant, saying, Thy son, whom thou shalt set upon thy throne in thy room, he shall build an house unto my name. That was the purpose of Solomon. The purpose of Solomon was to build God's house. All right? And when Solomon came to God, after they made him king in chapter 3, God said, what do you want? He said, I want wisdom to be able to rule your people. God said, okay, I'll give you wisdom, but I'll give you some extras. I'll give you wealth. I'll give you long life. I'll give you your enemies, all right? And God blessed him with wealth. Why? Because there was a purpose of God on the life of Solomon. And today we are saying our purpose is one of the forces that pulls wealth into your life, all right? God created the physical and um, God created the physical to have sufficiency for all humans 
that will ever exist here on Earth and probably some other planets. There are enough resources on Earth for the human sustenance and prosperity, and that's the truth. God also desires that his children enjoy financial abundance. And because these, because of this, he made sure that Jesus included the payment for this, all right, this financial abundance in the redemption process on the cross. Jesus paid for it. He has paid what is so where they are paid for this thing. And they paid with the life of God. They've paid with the blood of Jesus, which is the life of God. The life of God was used to pay for your prosperity, for your abundance. So abundance is not something you are begging to get. It's something they have already paid for, for you to experience here on earth. So it's your right. It's your right. It's your right. It became the poor we all should have been and died with that poor we should have been. All right. So that we can escape. Keep that experience. So the experience of being poor, you have already escaped. Why? Jesus took that experience and died with it on the cross. You are not supposed to be poor. If you're expressing anything that looks like poverty, it is the bullying of Satan. You can say, no, I reject it. Jesus already died and destroyed this experience. It's not supposed to surface in my life. So from today, I disallow it. And if you keep saying that, I tell you you'll be out of it physically manifested that you're out of poverty out because jesus already died with that experience he can never read in your life he gave us the riches that was his and the wealth that should have been given him his portion among the great he gave us his harvest among the strong he delivered to us because the bible said god gave him a portion all right, the greatness of this earth, God gave Jesus a huge portion. In fact, the major shares, He gave Him the major shares of all the harvest of this earth, and all that Jesus committed to each one of us that is born again. So, you have a portion of what Jesus is supposed to have. Every one of us has a portion, and it's a portion of greatness, it's a portion of harvest. All right, so the above is what Jesus did. The above is what Jesus did to establish us in prosperity and bring wealth and abundance into our life. It is important to always make reference to this because this is the redemption. This is what Jesus did to pay for you to have abundance. You must always make reference to it. He died with the poor I should have been. So I cannot be poor. You have to keep saying it. I can't be poor. The poor I should have been died with Jesus on the cross. I can't be poor. The riches that belongs to Christ on the, from on, in all this universe, from planet Earth to all the planets, all the riches that belong to Christ. Jesus gave me a portion of it. He gave all of his, his, his brothers and sisters a portion each. And all of us, the portion he gave us is, is too much. It's too much. It's more than enough. And you have to keep saying that because that's what Jesus did. All right? But there are forces that wealth and prosperity respond to. We need to study and know about them. And I mean, they, they are the powers that determine the direction of wealth among human beings. Listen, when, if you are able to get in the spirit from a bird eye view, meaning looking up from above on earth, you will see movement of wealth. You will see all the path that wealth is taking. And when you look properly, you will see some forces. They're like magnetic forces that are pulling wealth, pulling wealth, and they are directing the directions of wealth. So the wealth is moving, but there are forces that are creating the movement that is happening. You'll be seeing the movement. If you're able to get in the spirit and see it from the body eye view, you'll see the movement. And these movements are created by some forces. Those forces are making, they are moving the wealth. Even wealth that have not been discovered, the forces are causing those wells to be discovered and they are moving and they are moving and they are moving and they are moving. All right. What are these forces? There are five of them we're going to study this week. So please don't miss any. All right. And then share this broadcast after with people that are of interest to you. The first of this force is purpose. The purpose of a person, the reason for their existence and what God designed their life to accomplish and fulfill is a force that pulls wealth. 
Every purpose has a portion of the wealth of this world attached to it. The wealth of the earth attached to it. Every purpose. All right. So what it takes is just to find it and serve that purpose to humanity, nature and the universe. Because your, your purpose may be for different things. Some people is in finance, some people is in legal, some people is in medicine, some people is in ministry, some people is to uh, uh, less privileged, some people is to destitute, some people is to people with mental health, some people it is to uh, prostitutes. You know, we all have purposes for different things. Some, some of us have purposes as to preserve some animals. Some of us have purposes are to preserve original seeds, you know, because they have all the twig seeds on that. So all the food we are eating, we, we are not seeing the original ones. You understand? So we all have different purposes. The moment you find your purpose and you begin to do it, you begin to carry it out, you begin to serve that reason to the world, to, to humanity, to, to the earth, wealth will come. Why? Because there's wealth attached to that purpose. Some of the wealth is going to be people paying for that which you are serving them all right you are serving them and they are paying for it some of them it is not that you are charging them uh, uh, when you serve it to them you are serving your some, some some purposes are served freely but people give to the 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 one that is serving it to them all right some purposes are served you know to certain categories of people and certain categories of people pay for it you know god has wealth attached to your purpose your purpose has a power to pull wealth into your life. The moment the carrier of that purpose begins to serve the purpose for human, humanity, life, and nature, wealth attached to it will live wherever it is held, all right, and move to that person. That's what happens. Wealth, wealth is in different places. It's the, different, the wealth of your purpose is in different places. The moment you begin to serve your purpose to the world and to people, you, the wealth will live wherever it has been stored. And move to you all right all the wealth that solomon needed for his purpose as king and builder of the gorgeous magnificent uh temple of god started moving towards him as soon as he accepted the purpose which was building god's temple and being the king over israel that was it wealth began to move the gold of Ophir began to move you know all his businesses over the over the Mediterranean began to flourish, prosper. They began to bring spices. You know, uh, when the queen of um, Ethiopia, uh, uh, queen of queen of Sheba, the, the, when she came, she brought spices. She brought gold. Solomon gave her more gold than she brought. Oh, Kabaria Sakada, that man was rich. The Bible said in the days of Solomon that silver was like the stones of the ground in jerusalem wealth spread so much because that man was to build a magnificent temple that was going to be you know made of gold and some few other materials so wealth flooded into his life why because that was his purpose that was his purpose all right god started moving towards him as soon moving to uh, uh, wealth well towards him as soon as he accepted his purpose the wealth attached to your purpose will find you once you commit to serving that purpose to the world. Let's pray. Pray and say, Father, I receive grace to find my purpose and to begin to serve my purpose to humanity, to the world. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, I declare the wealth attached to my purpose lost to find me in the name of Jesus. Pray that in the Holy Ghost, your Poku Ningere Kaba. Orish of your Pesia Sangotensian Popolusicada. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Glory to God. Now, let's just do some few confessions. Remember the words you speak today, creates the future you want tomorrow. And tomorrow starts from the next second. All right? Say with me, say, in the name of Jesus, I am born of God. God is love. I am love. God is holy. I am holy. God is righteous. I am the righteousness of God. I have the spirit and the mind of humility like Christ. So I walk in humility. I'm submissive to God, his will and his purpose for my life. 
I manifest my purpose. I have found my purpose. I'm serving my purpose to the world and humanity. And the wealth attached to my purpose has found me now in the name of Jesus. I declare I am the blessed of the Lord. The Lord has supplied for all my needs. I live in sound health because by the stripes of Jesus, I have been healed. I'm surrounded with favor as a shield. So I'm favored everywhere I go. Today, it is well with my soul. And I've done excellently well in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Speaking to your day. And if today is your birthday, I need you to get into the comment and type it in there. Let me pray for you quickly before we go this morning. All right. And if you joined us for the first time, if today is the first time you are participating in PhD, we have a beautiful gift for you. All right. The gift of um, a prophetic word. We'll pray for you. God will speak to us and we'll send it to you. All right. And to get that, you need to send us a message. You need to send us your name, city and nation you joined from. And you need to send that to this number. Let me put that number on the screen for you. Send it to this number. All right. So if you're a first time, send it to this number. And you'll get that prophecy in a couple of days. The Lord bless you. Mm -hmm.